Well, at the onset of the program, we promise to focus at some point on the subject of leadership and to what extent the absence of it has contributed to the current retarded state of uh, Nigeria's growth, development and nationhood. We will now proceed to explore that subject a little bit more by speaking with Nosai Gebo, co-founder and president of Telecommunications and editor-in-chief of the Tel News magazine, a medium that was deployed to maximum effect in the fight against military dictatorship and tyranny in the early and late 90s. We shall also take him up on fake news in the media. Good morning to you, Mr. Gabo. Thank yeah, you so much morning. for being yeah, here much. on the morning show. Thank you. Yes. So um, let's talk about, you know, just like the introduction read, you know, ineffective or what some would say bad leadership. And I want to know in, in your words, in what, to what extent do you believe that the absence of effective leadership has contributed to the current state of Nigeria's growth and development? And what specific areas or sectors have been more affected? Well, uh, I mean, the lack of leadership has... Uh, uh, being uh, the bane of the problem, uh, the uh, Nigeria's uh, uh, lack of progress in virtually every area of human endeavor. Uh, like it is said, a country without leadership is is a country that is lost. Uh, and you know what? What is so sad about about our situation is that uh, you know the definition of insanity. We keep doing the same thing, same way, all the time, and expecting a different outcome. You know, it's, you, you, you find that problems we, we talked about 40 years ago are still with us today. Just this morning on my way to your, to, to, uh, to your, to sh to your show, I was just playing fella, oh, fella with a green record, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know, shuffling and smiling, okay? These are songs, these are, these are issues Fela highlighted in its various uh, songs 40, 50 years ago. And we're still dealing with the same problem today. And that just speaks to the lack of leadership, the lack of a national consensus as to what really you want to make Nigeria. How, what, do you want, what do we want Nigeria to be? Uh, every four years, at least in the last 23 years or so, we hold, we hold general elections and uh, you know, and, and the, the outcome is always the same. Controversial, uh, where it produces an elected, in quote, a government, and nothing gets done. You know, and we just keep moving around in circle. So it is, there is no good saying the fact, and we cannot emphasize, this, emphasize it too, uh, enough that a country without effective leadership is you know can't can't go anywhere, and that's what we are witnessing in Nigeria today. All right, uh, Mr. Gebo, let let's bring in the aspect of uh, fake news, yeah, um, and how it affects our profession, but not just our profession, how it can potentially damage businesses and investments. Uh, just over the weekend, uh, a new leadership of the Nigerian Guild of Editors, you know, was put in yeah, place yeah. in Oweri. It's part of the general conversation about how the profession, you know, would need to up its game and weed out uh, those who um, are putting a wrong label, bad label on the profession. Yeah. Um, I know that in, in many people are falling victim. Uh, just a forwarded message on WhatsApp or a faceless blog you can't trace yeah. anybody you don't yeah. know where it is but then you see that people are yeah. circulating it people are falling victims but then this is not just about individuals falling victims it's about how it can potentially harm um, multi-billion dollar investment uh, the entire investment you know a uh, 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 climate in nigeria yeah. you are a veteran in this in this business how, how will you assess it because it's not reducing sadly uh, the old point about a citizen journalism is now moving to faceless journalism mm. and is hurting a lot of things. How do you think it can be tackled? Well, the concept of citizen journalism, journalism uh, ab initio, was uh, a very dodgy concept. <laughs> I mean, where you ask people to define what is citizen journal, uh, journalism, okay, you have access to social media, uh, you can uh, create a title and, you know, create a blog. And you begin to report uh, stories, 
uh, make commentaries, make analysis about about subjects you have no knowledge of. Mm. Uh, fake news has become a global uh, phenomenon, uh, uh, fueled by the explosion in uh, uh, internet. Yeah. Um, virtually, you know, half of the world population today have access to the internet, and uh, because it's a free for all, it's like a jungle. Yeah. Uh, there's really no control. So it's a global phenomenon. It's not really. It's not actually peculiar to Nigeria. That's right. Uh, but you see, the uh, but it is is exploded to the point where it become absolutely necessary mm. that every government, uh, I in the Nigerian government, should begin to address it in a very uh, fundamental way, uh, because uh, b uh, people just go out there, put out all kinds of stories. Mm. Most of them are. I mean, not virtually all of them are are, are false, mm -hmm. and and th this these fake stories are are promoted deliberately to achieve a purpose, mm. in order to damage somebody's character, uh, in in case of politics, demarcate your opponents, yeah. and uh, you know, and so, you know, on and on. Yeah. And uh, what is sad about this whole thing, now, and and it's very worrying, it's very worrying, is the fact that a lot of people. Uh, you know, should not to be designing whatever uh, it is forwarded to them on their yes. social player, social media platform, yeah. uh, maybe WhatsApp, Instagram. Yeah. The first reaction is, oh, this this must be true. For <laughs> for Steve to have forwarded it to me, oh, this must be true. You know, you know that kind of a thing. Yeah. So uh, there are very few people, except all of us who are in the media, uh, who can easily spot a story yeah. uh, that is not really a story. Uh, for the general public, who who don't have uh, you know uh, you know that ability f f for uh, to 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 differentiate between uh, what is real and what is fake, yeah. it's a it's a it's a big problem for them. Hmm. And I think that uh, we we the media profession is really really challenging this in in this aspect, and we need to do more uh, to push back. Hmm. Uh, you know, because we are majority of the public now depend on, like you said, you know, facelift blogs, mm. uh, people who who set up a new site, uh, just aggregating content from everywhere they can find it, and uh, you know, uh, coming up with their own stories. And you know, something happens, they simply twist it around, uh, turn the facts up, upside down, and give it some uh, roary headline, mm. and uh, the kind of thing that attract people. Yeah. Uh, you know, human nature is such that uh, we tend to believe everything we hear mm. until it, you know it is pointed out to us oh, this is not real or this is fake. So it's a it's a real big challenge. Mm. I would even say human beings are uh, aligned to believe bad news yeah. <laughs> first over good news. Yeah. Bad, news but, <laughs> bad news sells. <laughs> but I was just uh, you know reading up on you know because we're, we're talking about you know how to solve this problem about a company called Rise Networks. Uh, who in January had launched an app uh, that would also that would help curb uh, fake news. It was being sponsored by the MacArthur Foundation and the Center for Information Technology and Development. So, in looking at more solutions, how what role do you believe uh, maybe social media platforms and technology companies should play in the curbing of fake news? Because sometimes it feels as if the burden is on just journalists to always uh, be the ones to verify. We're looking at in the United States where we have the top four, you know, Twitter, Facebook, um, Google, and I don't remember the last company now who have had to, in, in multiple occasions, go to, go to the floor of the Senate to defend their, uh, you know, how their companies have contributed in the spread of fake news. So bringing it down to Nigeria, do you think that there should be more, uh, you know, a more of like a curb on these social media companies? Because they're the ones that really drive the technological part of spreading uh, the fake news. Well, I mean, I was just doing a piece uh, on uh, the Guardian of London website last night uh, 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 on this issue. Uh, the unpreparedness of the social media giants like you know Google, uh, uh, what is Facebook. Other one? Facebook, Instagram, all that, uh, to seriously address this problem of allowing their platform to be taken over by all kinds of characters uh, who promote uh, hate speeches, uh, spread uh, false you know false stories, 
about people and event. Uh, because uh, the more for them, the, the more people they have on their platform, the more clicks they record, that, that translates into uh, to, uh, uh, I mean, back money for them. Yeah. They are more interested in, in making money than really uh, solving this problem of uh, uh, people taking advantage of uh, the easy access you have to this social platform to cause a lot of harm. And you can see what it's doing to the uh, American political system. Uh, you know, and uh, and they, 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 they simply know how, to, know how to deal with it. For example, just uh, about two weeks ago, I, you know, I, some, someone forwarded a story to me saying that, uh, what was the story? Oh, that uh, NMPC had uh, issued a license to Dangote Refinery and Petrochemicals to import fuel. You know, my first reaction was to laugh. But on second thought, I said, no, this is not a laughing matter. Because, I mean, it is such a, an illogical thing. And, but it turned out a lot of people, I believe, because I saw so many comments. They said, oh, you see, what would this is what we have always been saying. The government is always trying to give a leg up to Dangote. Oh, now, you see, they say they have commissioned a new refinery and then they are going to import fuel. It just didn't make sense. And, uh, and you ask yourself, why would anybody just sit down somewhere and push out such a false story. First and foremost, NNPC is now a limited liability company. It's not, it's not, its regulatory function has been taken over from him. So why would NNPC, who is supposedly a limited liability company, be issuing license to a private company to import fuel? It does, just doesn't make sense. I thought, uh, if, 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 if I'm wrong, correct me, uh, the the national is it uh, what do they call downstream mainstream uh, petroleum regulatory authority are supposed to be the ones issue license for, for you know yeah. for importation of fuel, not an MPC. But a lot of these things are pushed out there, and uh, thankful, thankfully, an MPC you know responded. responded by issuing a statement denying yeah. that I mean any such thing uh, uh, took place. But as I speak to you now, there are lots of people out there. Who read that story? I probably didn't get fact to check. read. Yeah, you know, not not just fact checking. People don't have time to fact check. It's only people who are journalists that <laughs> will fact check stories. The other man in the street don't really have time. You yes, know, sir. I mean, like I said, their first reaction to is to say, "Oh, you see, we told you so." You know, say, "Oh, they open an inquiry." Yeah, it's, it's all uh, they, they are just deceiving us. You know, uh, but like I said, thankfully, NMPC responded and issued a statement. But a lot of people who read the first story, probably did not get to know that NMPC had That's right, as, as yes. exactly. So it's, 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 continue yeah, to it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a big problem. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that's an important area that you have touched on. Yeah. And I know that it is not limited to uh, even the issues of oil and gas, say, Dangote refinery, NMPC, etc. I mean, almost uh, every major issue yeah. uh, that is in the front burner now, uh, the trial of, say, uh, an Emifili or a Bawa, you know, every day you get to read some fairy tales about what was either discovered or what are the reasons why people have been tried. But my, my point is, we know that the, most of these things are not true. Uh, but between shoddy journalism and outright um, machinery to promote fake news, yeah. how, how do you think that um, uh, businesses that are concerned can begin to tackle these things and our government can respond. I mean, you know quite well, you, you, you have a deep understanding of the oil and gas sector. And for example, the, the, the huge investment that has gone into the Dangote you know, refinery, for example. So if an NMPC had not responded, people might be inclined to think that, oh, so the Dangote refinery will not be ready as promised by a particular period. Yeah. And then he, 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 he has now monopolistically collected the, you know, the, uh, the license to, to start importing fuel. So two things, sir. Uh, between shoddy journalism and outright fake news that has been, yeah. you know, Marshall, how do you deal with it? And then the subject matter that you have made reference to, let's even expand the argument. How ready, cool, because this is something that you know, how, how ready possibly... Uh, is the Dangote refinery because people are saying that ah, the president just commissioned something that is not ready. Maybe this is a way for Dangote to go into 
importation of fuel. Is that where we are? If it is not the, 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 the case, what really is the truth? Okay, let me tell the first leg of the question, which is that uh, I think it's um, what, what can be done, at least in interim, is that yeah. Uh, just like NMPC, uh, the example we give uh, NMPC, yeah, in their response, the response, quick response. Uh, when any, uh, maybe an individual organization, the, uh, once you get to know, there are a lot of uh, false stories about you, about your uh, uh, your organization, about things you've done. I think a quick response is uh, is needed. Mm. Uh, so you put the facts out there, yeah, and uh, also push it not just on the traditional media. But also on social media, uh, because that's really where the damage uh, is being done. Mm. So you need to go there and fight them with facts, uh, fight them with the, uh, the facts and figures. Unfortunately, there are people who, who are so cynical that uh, they tend to believe, you know, like we say in journalism, you know what I mean? Uh, a dog bites a man, it's no news. <laughs> it's no news. It's when a man bites a dog. <laughs> so there are people who are so cynical, they tend to believe anything that is so negative and again because of the general situation in the country where uh, people don't trust the government they don't trust pub public institutions they don't trust any institution whether public or private so there's a lot of cynicism mm. and and these are provided a fertile ground for a uh, fake new uh, purviors you know to thrive mm. you know so but like i've said it requires a instant and constant pushback, yeah. uh, whoever is affected, whether individual or or or, 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 or corporations. Uh, well, you know, for me, concerning the Dangote uh, refinery, uh, I think, I mean, I find it, you know, extremely uh, laughable when people sit down somewhere and say, "Oh no, no, okay." Uh, Dangote group is being specially favored. Oh, they've done this, they've done that. Uh, Steve, remember that in the last, I think since Obasan just, uh, uh, Obasan just Regime, administration, yeah, administration, the government had issued licenses to prospective or to private companies who 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 who, who claim that they wanted to invest yeah. in, 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 a, in a refinery, That's the right. downstream sector right. of the economy. You know, but so far, yeah, there have been a few um, small modular refineries here, and there are three, I think, in those state forests, about very small capacity, 6,000, 10,000. Mm. But the only company that have taken up that challenge, used its license, and wrong with it, is the Dangote Group. And that was why, I mean, two weeks ago, you know, they were able to uh, get the outgoing president to come there and commission it. Of course, you know, when you set up a new uh, uh, project, let's say a factory, for instance, yeah. like, that's a very complex that's right. uh, refinery. You don't, the fact that it was commissioned on May 22nd doesn't mean it will start production on May 22nd, okay? And I think maybe the group also wanted to just do the former president a favor yeah. because the, the execution of the project was done largely on, under his tenure. You know, so since it was going, it was going, it's okay, look, let's give you the honor to commission it, mm -hmm. okay? Otherwise, I mean, they could have waited till when they are going to start production, yeah. which, they, which they say, okay, it's August, September. Yeah. Because a complex, a complex setup like that, I'm not an engineer, I think what is normally do, they have to do a lot of test running. That's right. And all, make sure all the systems are working, uh, are properly synchronized and all that. Mm. But, but, well, we should, what, what we should all be happy about is that that refinery is in place today. You know, maybe a few, a couple of months, a, a, a couple of months, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ahead, they will start production. A major, it's a, it's a major game changer. So when you, in spite of this, oh. you see people. Uh, trying to demarket Dangote. Oh, go, a government that uh, there was a there was a post I saw again was utterly ridiculous where we were saying that the Minister of Finance, um, um, you know, financed the construction of Dangote refinery. And I, you know, as somebody called me, said, oh, "Have you seen this?" And I told the person, if the Minister of Finance has so much money 
to finance the construction of Dangote Refinery. Why won't they fix oh, well. the, the four refineries four. we have that have been moribund for 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 decades? Worry, Potter, you know, Kajuda. And and they say, you know, but this I say no. NMPC, I mean the government through NMPC invested in Dangote Refinery. Like I wrote in my piece two weeks ago, that's the best thing that one of the few things, the very good things I think the Buhari administration did. You know, you know, uh, you know, moving into so okay, look, we want to take uh, uh, have a stake in it, you know, and um, if if again, you know, it's just that in Nigeria, the government seems to have a, what I call adversarial relationship with the private sector. Uh, if Arise is successful, they get they get angry. That why can why should Arise TV? Why should it be Arise? Uh, why should it be Arise? Why should it be so popular? Why everybody listening to Arise? Why are they believing uh, those who go to Arise and say something? That is the attitude of government, and it, it and it applies to every sector of the private sector. You know, so if Dangote is successful, oh, oh no, I mean, it's just all out of fear, envy. Oh. Uh, you know, fear that, oh, Dangote continue to grow exponentially, becoming very powerful. And let me tell you, Steve, all over the world, it's really not really peculiar to Nigeria. Government tend to fear uh, big corporations that are doing very well. <laughs> and they try to find a way to curb them. But that said, yeah. every government who wants the economy to grow, what does it do? It support the private sector. It's, it's support private entrepreneur, attract investment, and do everything, create conducive environment for investment to flow in. Mm. For, because it's only the private sector that can create jobs. Look at the Dangote Group, for instance. Their record speaks for that. I don't even need to come yeah, here. But, but how much of this do you think uh, uh, has been sponsored by, uh, by competitors, for example? Because you also can rule that, you know, rule that out, although it doesn't appear as if the uh, allegations of monopoly exist because we know that uh, I think is it in the Kwai bomb that Bua Group is 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 already uh, building another refinery. People who have licenses that they have not utilized. But then again, it's it, it, it's it's business. It's, it's business. How much of it could could I, it I possibly think, be fueled by? No, it's, it's possible. Maybe the competition, but I think it's just lazy talk. Just briefly, please. Yeah, just lazy talk. Why do I yeah. say so? Because there there was a vacuum. Okay, mm. and the Dangote group moving to fill it. And then, and look at it this way. A, a 1980 to 90 billion dollar investment with several components, fertilizer plant, petrochemicals, refinery, and so many other assets, I mean, uh, associated, uh, this thing that, you know, that, that that complex has. They deliver that project in six years. Okay, and this is what drives fear in maybe for those who are pushing all these fake stories about, oh, Danko Day has done this, Danko Day has done that, yeah. uh, government has uh, made it possible for them, right. and all that. There's something wrong in government partnering with the private sector. Mm. The Nigerian uh, liquefied natural gas uh, company is, NNG, is, yeah. is a good example. Absolutely. In, uh, the Nigerian government has a 49% stake. Every year, they are getting dividends in billions of dollars. That's right. You know, so there's nothing... For me, if a government assists Dangote or any private company to succeed, I don't see anything wrong with it. All I right. don't see where anybody should try, you know, spill it tears over that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Anasai Gebo, we want to thank you for joining us on the morning show today. And we hope that the many of fake news will be a thing of the past now that we have a government that appears very proactive and decisive in thank matters you. of that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.